Welcome, everyone. My name is Stephanie Tauber Gomez, and I work at Digital Switzerland, where I co lead the area of collaborative innovation. Usually, I'm not at such a fancy studio, but working together with different organizations to use the power of innovation and digitalization to jointly find solutions for today's challenges like climate change or how to improve our healthcare system. But today, I'm here to present to you the Startup Battle 2021. The Startup Battle is a digital day's stage where we promote and support Swiss startups. But more than just that, what we want to do is share their passions with you and the approach of a lifelong learning of, of not just simply accepting how things are, but using entrepreneurial spirit and ingenuity to always strive for a better solution. We will be presenting to you 15 different startups in the next five episodes, where we will have, per each episode, three startups pitching to trying to convince you at home, me, and most of all, our experts. What you can do is you can go and vote on digitaltag.swiss slash startup battle to help and save your favorite startup a spot on the big finale on November 10th. I'm already super curious to see which are the startups that we've selected for this year. But before this, I would like to welcome my co-moderator, Lucas Kienbrew, who is the co-head of communication at InnoSwiss. Hi, Lucas. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. So I know what a co-head is. I wonder, though, if everyone else does. So how would you explain what a co-head is? And, and yeah, why co-head and not just head? <laughs> it's, it's fairly simple, actually. Um, with my colleague Enya, Elian, we, we share one position, one job. We job share, actually. So we both <laughs> work part time, uh, but we have a joint responsibility to manage the team and all the communication activities at InnoSwiss. Having said that, I'm very pleased and delighted to welcome two well-known experts of the Swiss startup uh, ecosystem. I would like to present first Raphael Tobler. Raphael, you are CEO and co-founder of the leading Swiss education portal eduvo.ch. You are a board member of the Swiss Startup Association and president of the Entrepreneurs Club Winterthur. <laughs> Raphael, I was wondering why did you decide to become an entrepreneur? Was it some sort of a, a dream already when you were a youngster? Um, basically, no. <laughs> it's not a Disney story. Um, I was working in a corporate and then I get my own idea about uh, Eduvo and I started the startup business. And then this was the beginning of getting involved in this uh, small but unique ecosystem here in Switzerland. Yeah. Thank you for this small personal anecdote. Um, I would now like to welcome our second expert, Isabel Sigrist. Isabel, you are founder and CEO of Sunborn, a company that hatches ideas into companies. You try to launch and scale new businesses uh, in either corporate organization or startups. Mm -hmm. You have been uh, awarded uh, you have been rewarded by Forbes as a 30 under 30, which reward bright, the brightest entrepreneurs which are um, under 30 years uh, of age. Um, my question to you, Isabel, uh, is when, if I have a, an innovative idea and I come to you, what would be the most important piece of advice you would give me? Good question. I think for me, the most important thing is that you think about why you're starting your journey and you identify your North Star so you know why you're going to set this business up. So it's really this purpose. I call it maybe alignment. I don't think every job has purpose in it. I understand that sometimes when you do a job like administrative work for your startup, you're not going to see it. But when the times get rough, and they will get rough, you know why you started it in the first place. Thank you very much for this Northern Star. Um, the viewers, it is now time to come to the startup battle, this semi-final today. Uh, we are very happy to welcome 
Typewise and its CTO, so Chief Technical Officer and co-founder Yanis Berniker. Thank you very much. Your startup um, wants uh, to make our daily life or use of, uh, of our mobile phones actually easier. Um, I've read that earlier this year you, you were awarded a, um, an, an innovation award at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, one of the most important tech uh, events worldwide. So how did that feel to get this award? Yeah, of course it felt great. I mean, we, are, we, we always believe in our product, so we know it's a great product. We also have a lot of users who believe in it, so we know <coughs> it works. But it's also nice to see like that experts also see that it's like a yeah, it's a good product and it's also relevant. And yeah, so it was, we were really happy. Thank you for sharing these this, uh, feelings. Um, it is now time to listen to your pitch about Typewise. You have 90 seconds starting now. Cool. So hello, I'm Yanis and I'm the co-founder and CTO of Typewise. We are a deep tech company um, on a mission to make our daily lives easier by decoding human thoughts. So every day we spend more than seven hours with our digital devices, but interaction only happens at 10% of the speeds of our, our thought. So there's like a, the result is like a huge loss of productivity affecting millions or even billions of people globally. So we built a privacy-focused AI text prediction technology, which doubles or even triples productivity of the average person. Our first product is like a next generation smartphone keyboard app which supports more than 40 languages and has been downloaded 1.5 million times already. And this is only the first step, of course, towards our goal to eventually power every human-machine interaction with our technology across mobile, desktop, voice, and even brain-computer interfaces. And the desktop solution is currently in testing phase and will be released later this year. So thank you very much. Well, Thank that you. was really a pitch quite to the point, short and neat. <laughs> you know what, I have to actually admit, I did download it yesterday and I just realized how stuck I am in my ways of doing things. <laughs> Plus maybe the fact that I wasn't ready to pay already for being able to use my five languages. <laughs> 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 but uh, I mean, since we have two startup experts here, I would like to maybe, yeah, have you, Isabel, first um, Use, of course, your experience as a, as a company builder where it's really about processes to uh, get some tough questions <laughs> to you, Yanis. Thank you, Yanis. Well, I think my first question is you're going to be a tech-based startup that it will try to develop outstanding tech. You got awarded an award. Maybe you, can you explain what's the magic sauce or what makes your tech better that you have for identifying what I want to say? Sure. There are like several elements. I mean, first thing is like that everything is like offline, works offline on the device. Mm -hmm. So it's basically encapsulated on your phone. And we believe this is the only way to really guarantee the user full privacy because then you can really be sure mm -hmm. nothing is, is transmitted to the internet. And even if like someone would, or if we or someone else would like to have the data, they can't access it basically. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is that we learn from the user. So we highly adapt to the writing style of the user, the vocabulary, the languages they use, how they type in the case of the, of the smartphone keyboard. And then we use all this data to like uh, predict the next word with the highest possible accuracy. If I can follow up on that, just also because we're talking to a broader audience, how does that magic sauce work that you identify what I'm thinking? Is it you train the predictability by me or her typing in stuff? And then you basically, your algorithm then learns and you then match it. So the bigger the database, the more people can actually, that you can understand. Or maybe just explain it one more step lower <laughs> sure. and then I'm going to be happy. <laughs> no, perfect. Um, it's a really good question, actually. Um, so basically, we train the model with public data, which is very mm -hmm. important that we use like realistic data that you actually also type on the phone. So you can't just train it with, um, I don't know, with, um, yeah, with some generic text or Wikipedia only, for example. This doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so this is very important. And then we have like a second layer which like learns from the user. So basically there's like two models, the standard language model and the personalized language model. Mm -hmm. And the AI learns then when, while you're using it, which um, prediction should it choose and how should it combine the results of the two models. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
So Rafa, since you do very much work on supporting Swiss startups as well from a more political side, and I think we would all love to see more deep tech uh, uh, Swiss startups make it globally. What are the questions you would like to ask, Yanis? Yeah, for me, like you are one of these rising stars, uh, startup. Everyone knows you. Everyone can read you in the newspaper. Basically, maybe when you are involved in the startup ecosystem, you you get a lot of news from from your uh, very successful startup. So maybe, what's your biggest challenge um, today or in the next weeks? Um, the biggest challenge, I think, for the keyboard app, let's talk about that, maybe, like, is the learning curve, right? I mean, probably notice when you start using it, people are really, like, used to the existing keyboard. So the first days are, like, a little bit challenging. Um, so now we are improving the product to make this first step basically easier so don't, you don't have, like, that steep of a learning curve. I think this is one of the challenges from the mm -hmm. product side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I fully agree. I wasn't ready to put in the effort to learn it between <laughs> yesterday and today. <laughs> well, on this note, um, Yanis, thank you so much for taking the time and explaining to us TypeWest. Uh, best of luck to you and your team. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Lucas, we're now ready for the second startup. Indeed, Stephanie. Um, we are very delighted to uh, Welcome on stage our the second startup competitor of today's semi-final. It's Smeets and its CEO and co-founder Alexandre Martin. Welcome, Alexandre. Welcome. You name the name of your startup, which is based in the canton of, of, of Vaux, um, actually comes from Let's Meet. So Smeets. Okay. Um, you offer a dynamic pricing platform for event organizers. Um, but I was wondering, uh, what about yourself? Uh, where do you like to meet people? Yeah, it's actually a very good question. So as you know, we are in a business where we love to meet people. So I'm around in cafe, in bar, in festival, in theater. I do love to meet people everywhere, where there's music, where it's fun or sport. Thank you very much. So if you want to meet Alexandre, you should probably head to uh, the Lausanne area and, and try <laughs> some bars and, uh, and uh, festivals and, 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 and other places where people meet. Thank you very much for that. Now it's time to listen to your pitch about Smeets. You have 90 seconds starting now. You probably know how EasyJet changed the price of flight tickets. Smith is doing the same to help cultural and leisure providers to increase their revenue. Unlike hotels or airlines, cultural players like museum, attraction park, or theater have no integrated solution to change the prices and optimize their stock. Actually, they sell the leisure or theater the same price all over the year. This doesn't make sense from an economical standpoint. Good morning, I'm Alex, CEO and co-founder of Smith, and we are the first ticketing and dynamic pricing software for cultural and leisure players. At Smith, we help them increase revenue by around 25%. We help them optimize the stock. Most of the uh, organizers still run with outdated software, like old museum or theater. And finally, we offer them an integrated solution that manage and help them save time in their operation. We are 35 people, all based in Lausanne. We are transacting on a platform around 2 million per month. We are reaching the 1 million francs revenue at the end of the year and targeting to expand the business in Europe. We are now looking for a CIA to grow our operation in order to boost our growth. Thank you very much and happy to take any question. Thanks so much, Alexander. I have to admit that I'm quite impressed, especially you bringing the solution to, let's say, maybe not always the most um, technologically savvy uh, industry as, as the cultural one. But uh, looking at YouTube, Rafael, what would you like to ask Alexander to help him make his first Series A? <laughs> maybe, I don't know if I, if I can help um, to, 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 to give some money, but maybe there are some other connections between us. But my question goes in the same direction um, that you talked before. When I think about the museum or about cultural institution, in my mind, they're always a bit old-fashioned. The structure is a bit old-fashioned. You're a very dynamic person. Uh, you know what you want to do. You know the story. You, want, you know what is your North Star. How does this work to yep. collaborate with these um, museums? Yep. So 
the COVID happened. And the COVID changed a lot of things in the cultural sector. Actually, before, people were really like outdated, not willing to change. COVID has changed, has limited capacities. People need to adapt and to opt more for digital solution. And actually, while everything, everybody thought COVID would be like a very difficult period for us, it helped us to double our customer book in one year. So I think for us, the environment now is just perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, so once more, another story where COVID actually had a um, enabling effect for the adoption of uh, digital technologies. Isabel, what do you think? What would you like to know? What is, you were saying your next step or next challenge is expansion. So you're currently in the Swiss market, correct? That's today correct. So we do account for approximately 95% of customers in Switzerland. And I've started to expand in the UK where we do now have a couple of customers and a local sales team. How are you doing? How are you doing it? Because it's a B2B integration, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So we do plan an expansion with having like some smaller rep office in different countries, accounting for a couple of sales and a customer, a couple of customer success. Okay, thank you. Well, I would like to open up the possibility for both of you to ask one last question. And a very short one, please. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe making it very easy. Um, would you guys use the solution? I think everyone used the solution already at home because we use it for booking.com, we use it at EasyChat, mm -hmm. we use it at, I don't know, some other portals and I think I'm very happy with this solution. So if I book in advance, I have a benefit, a personal benefit. If I book the day before, I have to pay a little bit more. So I will use this. Maybe I already used it, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's a very common solution. We started in fly industry, now we are at the cultural sector as well. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to be much easier than expected it through is. that. Um, Isabel, maybe you with, uh, again, your, your more uh, process-oriented uh, expertise, a last maybe um, suggestion, a recommendation you would like to give uh, Alexander and Smeet on their way, specifically on their expansion? I think the expansion, uh, he gave a good answer. I was curious if he's going to go into the Anglo-Saxon markets. I think it's really important for a startup to move into big markets and the, the UK one is big and then also the US I think would be on your list. So <laughs> I think Thanks that a lot. would be my So on this note, Alexander, thank you so much for being here. Uh, best of luck to you and your team for the expansion and uh, we'll be watching closely. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. And now we're back at the very last startup. Who do we have now, Lucas? Stephanie, we have already on the stage our third startup competitive of today. Um, it's the CEO and co -founder, uh, and founder um, of Collect Idea, David Geise. David, nice to have you with us. Thank you, nice to be here. Your startup is based in Goldach in the canton of St. Gallen. And, and, and you want to help other companies to protect their products, uh, being clothes or shoes or accessoires from counterfeits. Um, I've, I've seen that you have actually several sports club as, customer, as customers already. So I was wondering what about yourself? What is your favorite sports club? Um, yeah, I mean, as you already said, I'm coming from the canton of St. Gallen. So my favorite sports club is the football club of St. Gallen. And similar to our startup, for the club, there is a lot of up and downs, so it's not always going up. And uh, I think, yeah, similar to the startup world, if you have to suffer, if you have to wait for wins and for championship, then it's, it tastes even better when it happens. Thank you. It's, it's not a big surprise that you, you named the FC St. Kallen, and we wish, we wish uh, the, the FC St. Kallen good luck for this championship. Now, let's move to your pitch about your startup, Collect Idea. You have 90 seconds starting now. All right, um, I'm David, one of the co-founders and CEO of Collect ID, and we are the truth behind products. Almost two trillion dollar worth of goods are being faked every year, and consumers face the risk of buying those counterfeited items instead of authentic ones. For example, how should you know if this bag is authentic or fake? 
Collect ID solves this problem by combining blockchain and NFC technology and creating a truly tamper-proof system for those products and the brands. So how does this work? Products like this handbag get equipped with a secure NFC tag that contains a unique identity. This identity is dynamically encrypted, so it's not possible to duplicate or copy it. We then take this unique identity and create an unfungible token on the blockchain. So it's like a digital twin of the product on the blockchain. And since this information is decentrally stored, it's not possible to change the information later on. Users then simply take their smartphone, they tap it on the product, immediately receive the information whether the product is authentic or not, and they can store it in their personal collection, and with just one click, they can transfer it to a new owner. So we can protect brands from getting counterfeited and create a secure resale market for you as a consumer. We work with famous brands and sports clubs, and we have equipped hundreds of thousands of products already. So I'm happy if you join us on this exciting journey. Thanks so much, David. Uh, I have to admit that for me personally, being a bit of a Having a bit of a heart for sustainability, I love the idea because as you just mentioned, it enables a reselling marketplace and for the customers and the brands to know that they're not counterfeit. Who of you would like to start with some uh, deeper questions to David? Yeah, so David and I, we know each other since three years or four years in the startup ecosystem. So very interesting to see the journey and how it works. Um, started from shoes, going to football clubs, going to handbags. So what are the next big milestones um, you would like to achieve in the next months or in the next um, one, two years? Yeah, as you say, Raphael, um, the technology can be adapted to almost any product. Still, we have a clear focus on the sports industry and I would say on this luxury fashion. And our next goals uh, in the sports industry, it's very clear. So we made first international deals. Now we want to enter the US market because you all know the merchandising potential of the big US leagues, NFL, NBA, NHL, is enormous. And that's where we want to go in. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I think that's very important for Swiss startups. As you mentioned before, it's not only Switzerland and maybe Konstanz or Singen. Uh, so you, you go to the big markets, as you mentioned before, go to the, uh, go to the States or go to China. So there, there the market is much bigger than here in, uh, in Switzerland. So that's the perfect way that you're taking now. I have two questions for you. Maybe just, I see two business models. On the one, you, you're placing this chip in the B2B market, but then you're also talking about the marketplace. So maybe elaborate your business model. And the other thing is also then back to the tech. What, how does your, is your tech better than other counterfeiting technologies? Yeah, regarding the first question, that's true. We have basically two revenue streams. Mm -hmm. One is uh, an existing revenue streams with B2B partners. They pay per product added to the ecosystem. And the second one is by enabling this secure secondary trading, by enabling this reselling market, um, we can also charge a small fee from the buyer side. Um, because if you get the authenticity, if you get the guarantee that something is, is authentic, you're willing to pay a small fee. Mm -hmm. Coming to our USP, I would say nobody nails user experience and security like we do. Mm -hmm. um, there is a tons of anti-counterfeiting technologies in the market, but this one is truly secure. And for us, it was always important that everybody becomes an expert. So you only need a smartphone to check the authenticity. You don't need to, let's say, study the materials or uh, have a certain device to check it. The only thing it takes is your smartphone. And this combination of making it easy for the users and at the same time have a very secure technology, that's what makes us unique. OK, thank you. Well, I think on this note, um, let's say that the uh, American cockiness is already here. But I have to say, it's, it's great, as you said, that uh, it's so easy to access, so anyone can. And you're putting the customer into the center of really making sure what is worthy for them. Um, I think that I would like to wish you and your team at Collect ID uh, best of luck. And again, we'll be watching closely and hopefully 
celebrating with you when you make it in the US. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we have already gotten to the end of the second Startup Battle episode. As promised, you can vote for your favorite startup and help them to get a spot at the finale. To do so, please go to our webpage, digitaltag.swiss slash startup battle. And on this note, I would like to thank all of the entrepreneurs for being, having been here and shared their passion with us. So Yanis from Typewise, Alexandre from Smith, and of course as well, David from Collect ID. And another big thank you to our experts for having helped us to get a deeper understanding on what it is that these startups work on. So thank you, Isabel and Rafael. And lastly, of course, to all of our partners. Without them, this would not have been possible. So thank you, InnoSwiss, AWS, Sigtik, Swisscom, and of course, Canton de Vaux. So stay tuned, and we'll see each other next Wednesday for the third episode of the Startup Battle.